Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, we're gardening in Baltimore, Maryland, but today we're up in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, visiting world famous Longwood Gardens. I'm here with my husband on a beautiful fall morning slash afternoon, and we're just gonna take a stroll around and look at the fall garden displays here at Longwood. It's a world renowned garden, and uh, I hope that you'll enjoy some of what we see. Longwood Gardens is a beautiful, very large um, garden in southeastern Pennsylvania near Philadelphia. And there's so much to see. We aren't gonna be able to see it all, certainly not in this video. We're, Dave and I aren't even gonna probably see it all today, but um, there's a lot to look at and to learn from and to enjoy. So the first thing that we came upon as we were going down the main flower walk is a big display of pumpkins and fall gourds. So let's take a amazing. So for the home garden, you can get ideas from this. Uh, I see a lot of stacked pumpkins in home gardens. Also urns or containers that have mums. And this is, I think, an artemisia. And then uh, gourds and pumpkins. And look how they have protected the gourds from the soil. They just put a little bit of burlap down so that the gourds don't uh, rot on the soil. It's also interesting how they put the minis inside this little two-tour thing. Oh, it's got a little pumpkin right up at the top. A little finny old pumpkin up there. That's so cute. So, yeah, interesting. Kind of a cornucopia set on end. So moving from the center area, this is, by the way, the Rose Arbor area. And in the rose season, these um, hoops are just covered with beautiful roses all the way around here. And they really make a beautiful place for photographs when they're flowering. They're not flowering anymore, but they're still pretty. And then this is the main flower walk and uh, it's filled with pink and purple and silver, it looks like this season. Let's take a closer look. dinosaurs? No? We heard a mom tell her toddler son that this is where the dinosaurs would live. So I will admit that while I can appreciate the beauty of this garden, this is not my favorite style. The tropical thing just reminds me of heat and humidity and that makes me feel hot and I don't like that. But I do understand why this is beautiful to many people. This is one garden that is clearly under uh, renovation or at least fall cleanup is starting to happen. The anemone flowers are finished and then you leave these fireworky kind of plant stems hanging over everywhere. Anemone, net, 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 is 
speaking my love language right here. I tell you what, these are my colors. Mexican petunia is right there. Some sort of salvia, I don't know which one. And then a different sort, but a nice blending sort. I don't know which one this is. This one might be playing the blues or black and blue, but also could be something else. I don't know, I'm gonna look for a tag. So this pathway is definitely calling out to me in the tones of purple along here. And then further down it turns to red, I think, but let's look at all the purple here first. Dave was just saying that uh, in this flower border we see that they're definitely using staking and string to hold up plants so that they don't fall over onto the plants in front. And I think we could learn a lesson from this at our house. We've got a lot of areas where we have tallish plants that want to flop over. And so what they've done is um, there are stakes here and then the strings around the stakes and they've created a network. Actually, let's see. One, to three stakes for this plant and then they made a loop around it, it looks like and they've done that probably for every plant that they planted and then these moms don't need staking but the things up behind it might yeah i do see stakes in all of those look at all those salvias So here's another example of the staking system. And now we're stepping into the red magenta pink section. Let's see what there is to see over here.
<laughs> no? You don't want to add these to our yard? No? Dave says no. We're not coming along. We do enjoy them. Now we've moved into another section of red. I guess the last one was considered pink. And this one is red. We've got lots of dahlia, smoke bush, caladium. Uh, looks like we got pentas. This is a, a goldenrod that I used to have in our backyard near our bird bath, but it never looked this good. It needs more sun than I was able to give it, I'm sure. Definitely not my color palette of choice, but it is striking. And if you love orange russet fall hues, this is a section for you, for sure. What the heck is that? That's 20 feet tall, whatever it is. say I kind of like this. Although without the orange around it, it would look brown. It is pretty cool. Some sort of some sort of grass or I don't know. And here's the yellow section. With beautiful big marigolds, cannas, some sort of rudbeckia. Let's see if we can find a label. No, no label there. And the last section of this flower walk is the white section. So again, they're using a lot of the same plants, just in different colorways. So we have lantana, what that is, but it's huge. We have Texas Sage Summer Jewel White. Ooh, what's this? This must be another one of those Datura things that had purple up on the other end. It's the same leaf. The white garden is the least impressive of all of them. <laughs> Not because I don't like white flowers, but because many of these flowers are past their blooming season. Well, friends, that brings us to the end of the flower walk and the end of the first part of our visit to Longwood Gardens. I have another video coming up very soon which will show the Italian gardens, the meadow, many fountains, the train garden, the conservatory, and more. Come back to this channel tomorrow and see part two of our visit to Longwood. Thanks for watching!